Happy Lunar New Year! My name is Coco Kim. Uh, I'm a chef, and today we're gonna make some duck mandu guk, which is a dumpling rice cake soup. We're cooking duck mandu guk because it's a traditional Korean dish to make for Lunar New Year or even New Year's Day. In this bowl, I have some pork, I have beef, I have watercress, ginger, garlic. And then here I have soy sauce and sesame oil, and we also have an egg. Now this is all the inside filling uh, for our dumplings. For the dumpling wrap, I'm using round dumpling wraps where you could find in the frozen section in a lot of Asian grocery stores. We're gonna add our soy sauce. We're gonna add sesame oil. And then we're gonna crack our egg. And this is fun to do with your family members or with your friends at home and just talk about life and make a bunch of dumplings. We're gonna mix it up with our hands. I like adding a uh, watercress to dumplings because it adds a, a, a nice like little spice to it. I add a lot of garlic because I love garlic. Don't mix it up too much. You don't want your meat to get tough if you mix it too much. Okay, once it's all mixed up, you're gonna wash your hands and then we're gonna get our dumplings ready. So I have a spoon. Some people like to use chopsticks. You're gonna grab your dumpling wrapper. You have a little bowl of water. You're gonna do half of the dumpling wrapper. You're gonna add the filling in the middle. So at Rutgers, I studied graphic design. I always wanted to do cooking, but my mom told me that cooking is just a hobby. Um, um, so I just try to do uh, graphic design. But then after working in graphic design, after graduating, I really want to go to cooking. So then I quit my job, started as a prep cook at Huerta's in the East Village. Then I worked my way up as line cook, and then I became a sous chef within a year and a half. After this, I like to put the flat side toward my fingers. I'm gonna water the edge. With my middle finger, I'm just gonna scrunch it. Don't put, your, don't keep your middle finger there. And you're gonna grab the edges and then you're gonna curl it. It's gonna look like a rose pot. If it opens up at the edge, it's okay, you could just close it. A pound of meat total could do one packet of dumpling wrappers. Um, and then you just lay it flat, put it in the freezer, let it freeze, and then you put it in Ziploc bags and then use it anytime you want. In Korea, we use a lunar calendar. In Korea, I'm a year older, but um, you could forget that. <laughs> no one wants to be a year older. Maybe when you're 20 and you want to be 21, but. That's the only time. <laughs> I magically made dumplings appear. No, I uh, pre-made some uh, dumplings beforehand. I put it in the freezer. Um, they're nice and frozen now. You could put it straight in the pan or in boiling water right after it's made, but it gets, it starts to get, the skin starts to get a little goofy, so that's why I like to start with a frozen dumpling. And these are much prettier frozen. On the stove, I have some bone broth boiling here. I have bone broth you could buy at any Asian store. I, I suggest you buy it at an Asian store because bone broth, Asian bone broth is really different from the American brands that have been coming out recently. So we're gonna bring this to a boil. And here I have sliced rice cake. Uh, it could come frozen or it could come refrigerated. If it's frozen, you should soak it in cold water for a bit until it softens. I'm just separating them because some are stuck together, you can see. While we wait, I'm dividing up the yolk and the egg whites. For the topping of our soup, we're gonna cook the egg whites and the egg yolk separate for our topping, then we're gonna slice it. You're holding your knife properly, thumb, and your index finger is on the blade and the rest of your fingers are on the holster. Fingers are curling up. If you cut like this, you're gonna chop your fingers off. Now we're gonna go right into our duck mandu. The dumplings take longer to cook, I would say seven to eight minutes, and the rice cakes take about three to five minutes. So you wanna add your dumplings first. If not, if you add the rice cakes first, then it gets too soft and it's like melting in your soup and you don't want that. Now, my bone broth has come to a boil. I am adding salt. This is not seasoned at all, so I'm generous with my salt. I like to use kosher salt 
table salt is very aggressive with the saltiness. If you line the salts up, they're all gonna be salty, but how it melts in your mouth is what makes it different. Right? So I'm dumping all our dumplings in. When you're dumping, you wanna dump it away from you so the splatter could happen. If you do it towards yourself, then it's gonna hit your face. So this is from Frozen. If it was not frozen, it's easier for them to stick together while they're cooking in the water. That's why I like to start from frozen too. They're starting to cook. You can see that they're getting translucent and you're starting to see the meat inside. At Huertas, I was scouted by somebody to be on Chop. They were like, do you want to be on TV? And I was like, no, absolutely not. It was definitely an experience. I would do it again though. And then I'm gonna dump my rice cakes. Don't stir too much, you don't want to break your dumplings. Give it a cover. Now we're gonna wait. And I have my short rib that I braised. And I'm just gonna tear it up. These are all toppings for our soup. All right, soup looks ready. So we're gonna go back and grab a bowl. Looks nice and chewy. So what we're gonna do is grab a ladle. Well, pretty much we just boiled. If you didn't, if you didn't want to make dumplings, then you could literally just boil all the ingredients together and that's it. And you just have to work on the toppings. Right before COVID, I was teaching cooking classes for adults and children. Then I had the opportunity to volunteer in Englewood, New Jersey. My church is in Englewood, New Jersey, and we were all about the community. So we wanted to be more involved in the community and helping and reaching out to them. I worked with the organization called Disabled Combat Veterans Youth Program. We launched a Hot Wheels dinner project. We make around 200, 300 meals per week. And every Thursday we would drop off those hot meals to a low-income house. I also volunteered for Bergen Family Promise and World Central Kitchen. They were working together to help the community of Englewood. Me and my mom, Nicole, we volunteered with them to help pass out food. I also started making my own meatballs. I started uh, making pickles, spices, and selling those. So now we're gonna make our watercress uh, chicory salad. My mom makes this all the time, it's so good. I don't know where she came up with it, but it's delicious. So I already washed and chopped chicory and watercress. Here I have rice wine vinegar, I have sesame oil, and I have sesame seeds, and that's all you need. I always loved cooking, and that built a foundation where I had my close group of friends who believed in me that I could go after my dream in cooking and food. And then I realized quickly it's not just food that I have passion for, but it, where the food goes to. Having the opportunity and the time to do all these volunteering really opened my eyes that uh, at the end of the day, I love helping people. This is hongpyeon, which is rice cakes filled with sugar and sesame seeds, chicory watercress salad, chapche, which is uh, potato noodles. This is kimchi, but it's the white version. Pet kimchi. And we have kimbap. This looks like a vegetarian kimbap. And then we have kimchi here. Here, we have this, it's called Dongrang Teng, which is a really funny, funny name. And this is um, crab chun. So this is ground beef. I actually used a dumpling filling, rolled it up, flour, egg, and then I pan fried it. And then here is imitation crab pancakes. It's a savory pancake, there's imitation crab, there's sauteed vegetables like onions, scallion, carrot, and a lot of garlic. And over here we have an array of panchan or mini side dishes that you would find at restaurants. And then we have our soup, finally, that we made together. And this is all for me. <laughs> Thanks for cooking with me. I hope you like the recipe and let me know when you cook it. You could DM me on Instagram at, at Chef Coco Kim. If you have any questions, let me know of any recipes that you want. I don't only do Korean food. I do a lot of different things, but um, if you have any questions, just let me know. All right.